All right, Shalom, Shalom, Kwam Yashala. Now, first and foremost, I just want to give all praises, glory, and honor. Do one, two, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakaha, Kodash. And double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well and that do teach well and that have taught me this truth. To you, I say Shalom, and Shalom unto the hopeful elect, Kwam Yashala and Abad Babal. All right, so um, the inspiration for this video comes from the comment board. A video that I did about three days ago. The title of the video is called um, Dissecting uh, Matthew chapter 25, verse 5. And uh, this individual by the name of Crypto, which that's uh, that's that's suspect right there. Uh, that's a red flag with a name like that. And your emblem is an X. Um, because when you go into the word crypto, crypto means hidden. What are you hiding from? Or what are you hiding and X means unknown. So this guy doesn't know the truth. And I can tell right off the bat, this guy's a scoffer. And I went on his page. Nothing's coming out of his page or his platform. Zero videos. He has three subscribers and he's doing nothing. But all of a sudden, he's this great teacher and he has all this knowledge. Right? So it's always the ones that are not doing anything. They're the ones doing the most talking. Right? So... um. Originally, he, he made a comment going into how um, death and, and, and slavery is a spiritual thing, right? Us going through bondage and, and death is, is really a spiritual thing. But I was trying to show him, you know, uh, uh, but it plays out physically in this realm as well, right? Um, and that's because, man, look at, look at the Israelites. When they disobeyed Yah Bashim Yavushai, they went into captivity physically. So, so because of your disobedience, you have to always you have to remember there's consequences and repercussions for your disobedience. It's not going to just play out in the spirit; it plays out in the flesh as well. So, I was trying to show that, and then after the conversation went into um, him trying to say that all nations are going to be saved. Pretty much that that was that's where he was trying to get at because he's upset. And then I went. And gave him more precepts showing, showing him that Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is only dealing with the nation of Israel first. First and foremost. And that's how it's always going to be. And then after he gets butt hurt. And then he says, well, Job was an Edomite. And he was an upright man. So Job can be saved. So that means other nations can be saved. That's, that's where he's coming at. So he says here, yes, correct. And that is by faith. Was not Job a servant of the Most High? Perfect. Do some research, friend. Job was Esau's grandson and king of the land of Uz, which is an Edomite land in joy. Ooh. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Now, I'm going to say this. Um, you know, if you don't want to accept the truth, that's fine. Because the scripture says in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 38, But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. So what does ignorant mean? Ignorant means to be stupid. So you can be stupid. You can be ignorant. That's fine. Um, uh, we, we've wiped our hand clean. The blood is off my hand. And I just gave you the truth. If you don't accept it, that's, up, that's on you. And that's okay. You don't have to accept this. But I can tell, man, you don't know anything. And you're definitely not teaching anything. Because I went on your channel, blank. Blank. And your name is Cryptos. And your emblem is an X. That's a red flag. That means you don't know anything. You don't know anything. All right. So anyways, we're going to prove that uh, Job is not an Edomite. Let's go into Malachi chapter 1, verse 4. Well, we'll start at Malachi 1 and 1. The Lord is not dealing with Esau and Esau, uh, Esau, Edom. They're the sons of the wicked. That's what the scripture says. And uh, they, they, are, they are going to experience something called indignation from the Lord right they are the border of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever so how could Joe be an Edomite come on man you guys man so this is uh, Malachi chapter 1 verse 1 it says the Mosai's love for Jacob who is Jacob and Jacob is uh, goes back to Israel now I gotta say this there are three classifications of men in the scriptures you got the sons of God, you got uh, the sons of the wicked, 
and then you have the you have the sons of men. So who are the sons of God? They go back to Yasha Yasha Allah, Israel. Who does Yasha Allah go back to? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If you want to get deeper, who does Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob go back to? Adam. All right. So those are the sons of God. Okay, sons of God. Who are the sons of the wicked? Pursuing to Malachi chapter one verse four, that's Edom. Who are the sons of men? The heathen nations. All right. So so there's three classifications. So you got to understand that as well. The burden of the word of Yahweh to the, to Israel by Malachi the prophet. I have loved you, saith Yahweh. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Saith Yahweh. Yet I love Jacob. And I hated Esau. Did you hear that? So the Lord hates Esau. The Lord can choose who he has mercy on and who he doesn't have mercy on. And that's something that the world and the Christian church and the majority of people out here don't want to accept. And that's why they push that dogma and that doctrine of how everybody can be saved and how the Lord loves everybody. That's not true. That's not true. And I'm sorry to burst your bubble. That's not true. Verse 3, And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Wow. Destroyed his home, destroyed his habitat. And that's going to happen again in these last days. That's going to happen again through thermal nuclear destruction. Where you Edomites dwell, the Lord is going to destroy that. And also you're going to be thrown into captivity. Verse 4, Whereas Edom saith, We are impoverished. So who's Edom? Edom goes back to Esau. Esau is a progenitor of the Edomites. The red race, you so-called white people. But we will return and build the desolate places, thus saith the Lord Yahweh of, of hosts. They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness. And the people against whom the Lord Yahweh hath indignation forever. Wow. So they are the sons of the wicked by default because they are the border of wickedness. So wherever they dwell, wickedness will manifest. Wickedness will always be there. So by default, that makes you the sons of the wicked. And guess what? The people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. What is indignation? Righteous anger. So the Lord is always going to be angry at the nation of Edom. So he's not with Edom. So how could Job be an Edomite? How could Job be an Edomite? Come on, man, unless the Lord makes an exception. Unless the Lord is contradicting himself through his word. And that's impossible because the scripture says the Lord is a power that cannot lie. So you're just ignorant. And I'm going to quote this again, man. I'm going to quote this again. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 38. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. And you people are ignorant. And you like being ignorant. Okay? You like being ignorant. You're ignorant. Have I become your enemy because I told you the truth? And yes, I have. <laughs> Alright? So this proves, man, um, the Lord is not dealing with the nation of Edom. He only loves Jacob. And he hates Esau, Edom, man. Alright, so let's go into Job. How did Job function? Let's go to Job chapter 1, verse 6. It says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before Yahweh and Satan came also among them, right? Okay, because Satan is a son of the Lord too, spiritual demon Satan, and he's in order. He takes order from the Lord. Okay, so anyways, verse 7, And Yahweh said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered Yahweh and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And that's right, because uh, Satan is, is, like a, is like a devouring lion, seeking whom he may devour. That's his job. That's how we set up in the spirit. To sift you. All right? Uh, verse 8. And Yahweh said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man? You know, perfect means he's trying to follow the law, such and commandment. He's rehearsing the righteous acts to the best of his ability. An upright man. One that feareth the Most High and escheweth evil. You know what it means to escheweth evil? It means to avoid evil. To abstain from sin. That's what he's trying to do. Now, the son of the wicked, which are you Edomites, you don't do that. And we just read it. <laughs> You're the border of wickedness. 
So Job, come on, man. Come on, man. Job is not an Edomite, man. Get your shit right. Okay, get your facts right. Okay? Come on, man. This is this is baby talk. This is Israelite. This is Hebrew Israelite 101. If you don't understand this, something's wrong with you, man. So let's get uh, Psalms 58. And we're going to go into how the wicked acts. Okay, so this is Psalms chapter 58. I'm going to start at verse 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. That's right. Edward Bernays spreading propaganda, lies, demonizing people, making up stuff, fabricating evidence, right? Exalting themselves and covering up the true images of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, the saints, right? And, and his holy people. Yeah, that's you devils, man. You're liars, natural born liars. So when you see a little Edomite baby, you know that's a devil, man. You know he's a damn devil and he's going to grow up to be a big devil. There's no truth coming out of those people. But when you go into the life of Job and how he acted, there was truth radiating off of that guy, man. <laughs> he, he was righteous. So the sons of the wicked, they're not righteous. The sons of Edom, they're not righteous. They're wicked. And this proves that. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear. And can't accept the truth either. Can't accept the truth. This guy might be an Edomite too. Crypto X. Remember, crypto means hidden. X means unknown. <laughs> Gotta watch a guy like that, man. Okay, so there you go. This proves that. Now let's go into Job 9.24. Job. 9.24 Basic precept The earth is given into the hand of the wicked Who are the wicked? You Edomites, man, we just proved it Malachi 1 and 4 You are the wicked He covereth the faces of the judges thereof If not, where and who is he? That's right, and didn't you do that? Something called iconoclasm Through your lies Changing the real images of the saints And the holy angels uh, The heavenly father and the son himself Right? Or, right? You, you changed their images and you made them look like you. So you exalt yourself above the Heavenly Father and the Son. And, and, and really, you're supposed to do that because it says the earth is given to the hand of the wicked. It's your time to do that, pursuing to uh, uh, Second Edger 6 and 9, Revelation 20 and 7 on down. You're set up to do that for a period of time. Right? So this is how the wicked functions. Okay? You have a God complex. You can go into, I believe, uh, I think it's First or Second Thessalonians, the second chapter and the third verse on down. It talks about how uh, the son of perdition will exalt himself above the Most High. And you are the sons of perdition. Sons of destruction. Sons of the wicked. You're doing that. So how could Job be an Edomite? Come on. How could Job be an Edomite? Come on, guys. Now let's get uh, Second Ezra's. Let's get Second Ezra's chapter six verse nine. Because Esau's world is coming to an end. Why is that? Why is his world coming to an end? If he's righteous. I just want to bring. I just want to put that out there. Second Ezra's chapter six verse nine. We'll start at verse 8. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. What does that mean? Jacob's going to get over Esau. He's going to have rule over his older brother. The elder shall serve the younger. That's going to play out fully in the kingdom of heaven. It played out a little bit during the time of King David. You know, the King David, he had you Edomites uh, under subjection, right? Or in subjection. But it's going to fully play out uh, without without any problems in the kingdom of heaven, we're going to have you Edomites in slavery. Now, I'll just say this as well: not all so-called white, not all white people, so-called white people, go back to the line of Edom. You do have Israelites that look white, and also you have uh, Edomites that look like the other nations, and you have Edomites that actually look like Israelites. For example, Herod, King Herod, he looked like a Jake. He looked like an Israelite, but his line goes back to Edom. Esau, Edom. So that's another thing. Not all white people are Edomites. 
All right. So anyways, verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. Why is Esau the end of the world? Why is his world coming to an end? Because he's wicked, man. And we went to Job 9.24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. But there's going to be a time where, where he's going to lose his power. Okay, and, and that's starting right now. He's losing his power. And he's being exposed for the devil that he really is. And people out here are asking for new leadership. They're tired of this devil leading. They're tired of this world being governed in wickedness, man. So Esau is the end of the world. Why is this world coming to an end? Because he's wicked. And, and that goes back to uh, Malachi 1 and 4. Remember, it says, The board of wickedness and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. <laughs> and you're going to see the Lord's righteous anger come out on this devil in these last days, man. His world is going to be blown to smithereens. Now it says, And Jacob is the beginning of it that falleth. And you know what that means? It means the kingdom of heaven is going to come in through Yahawashai. So Jacob is the beginning of it that follow. That means the kingdom of heaven is going to come into fruition. And that's going to be a righteous rule. Righteous rule. So I just wanted to bring that out. Now let's uh, go into Proverbs chapter 4 verse 14. This is just more proof on how the wicked function. Which are you so-called white people, man. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 14. Let's start there. Enter not into, into the path of the wicked, and go not into the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. Man, it says uh, Job was an upright man, he eschewed evil, so he avoided the ways of the wicked. But he's an Edomite, though. When we just prove, and we went into scripture, that uh, Edom, Esau, Edom, they're the sons of the wicked. They're the border of wickedness. Come on, man. Verse 16, for they sleep not, except they have done mischief. That's right. They won't go to bed until wickedness is done or accomplished. <laughs> and when hey, and when these devils go to sleep, man, <laughs> they're thinking about wickedness, man. I believe that's in Micah the second chapter. Micah the second chapter goes into that. And work evil upon their beds. <laughs> Roughly paraphrasing. <laughs> right? So, and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. Damn, that's how evil, that's a so-called white man. He can't sleep until someone dies. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. So this is how the wicked acts, man. It starts with you so-called white people. Alright? So let's get Micah. Let's go into Micah, Micah chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 1. Woe to them that devise iniquity. What is iniquity? You, you being in the condition without having the law, right? And work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. And they covet fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. Wow. You so-called workers will do that. Transatlantic slave trade. And all the other wicked things you have done. Man, go into the Willie Lynch writings, man. You have something called Willie Lynch Syndrome. I believe uh, there's a book called The Making of a Slave. It, it, it breaks down the psychology behind of, uh, of uh, Stockholm Syndrome. Stockholm Syndrome, man. Willie Lynch, he kept his slaves in order. <laughs> he, turned, he turned his own slaves against each other and made himself look like a god. So that's that that hey man that goes into they oppress a man and his house even a man and his heritage hereditary. Wow, that's you devils, man! You have coveted fields, you've stolen lands, you've stolen resources, you took it by the sword. Right. So this is talking about your Edomites, you Edomites, and Job is not an Edomite because he didn't act that way. So I don't know. Come on, man. All right, so I'm going to get, this is going to be a last, last precept. Uh, Job 21, I'm going to start at the 14th verse. And this is Job actually talking about the wicked and how they function. Really, this is going into you so-called white people and how you act. 
So this is Job 21, verse 14. It says, Therefore they say unto the Most High, Depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. What is the Almighty that we should serve him? And the fool has said in his heart, There is no God. You Edomites, you're fools. You, you're the ones that like to push that. Oh, there's no God. I'm an atheist. There's no God. I'm God. I believe in technology. That's you. What is the Almighty that we should serve Him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto Him? That's right. right. Job prayed to the Lord, so how could Job be an Edomite, man? There's more proof on the wicked and who the wicked is. So anyways, I hope this was edifying. Until next time, just want to give all praises, glory, and honor. Do one to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahushai, Bahashem, Rekahakudash, the belongings to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone of GMS, to USA, Shalom. Kwame Asha'Allah. Shalom.